link uh, to everybody. I would like to welcome you on our webinar, which is uh, named How to Save Annual License Fee with High Speed uh, System in VBand. My name is Peter Sotner. I am working in company Sub10 Systems on position sales engineer. You can say also it's technical support. Uh, my contact detail uh, you see on the first screen. I would like to immediately start with presentation. Uh, first uh, slide is describing what is uh, millimeter wave and what is V-band E-band. You see overall picture of uh, frequencies available for wireless or microwave systems. Uh, what you probably know are traditional systems like 5 gigahertz which is uh, license free. Uh, you know traditional microwave starting from 5, 6 gigahertz going to approximately 40 or 38 gigahertz. But today it's also possible to use uh, this millimeter wave systems and uh, we have two sub band in this uh, MMW band. One it's called E band. Uh, on the picture it's green. Uh, and it, this is system running uh, around 70 and 80 and in the future around 90 gigahertz and another band which is yellow it's a V band and it's running around 60 gigahertz in many countries this band it's license free or license exempt uh, if it's free it means there is no payment it's, it's license exempt uh, usually you have to pay some small registration fee for your local regulatory office if you are planning uh, to use this 60 gigahertz or V-band uh, link or V-band equipment, you have to do as for traditional microwave system link planning. Uh, for link planning, you have to calculate a couple of inputs, and uh, one which is on all systems, it's called free space loss. It's attenuation uh, related to signal propagation, and on V-band and on this uh, high frequency band uh, we have additional two key parameters for V band mainly it's uh, oxygen absorption it's attenuation which is coming from oxygen and you know our atmosphere it's uh, a couple of percent of oxygen everywhere and you have to calculate this attenuation and second key parameters it's loss which is related to rain other uh, uh, parameters like uh, dusty fox it's not critical for our system uh, mainly this rain calculation I will start with some explanation to provide you some figures uh, which are results of some formulas but don't worry during the presentation I will also present uh, link estimator which is very useful tool and you don't need to know all formulas how to calculate attenuation for rain and so on uh, this tool will allow you simply verify that link will work and what will be link availability you have to just put uh, coordinates what is link length and system calculate everything automatically to be familiar with uh, link availability I put some figures which are used uh, in microwave systems uh, it's availability and people are saying four nines five nines three nines and what does mean you see on this slide if I'm speaking about five nines availability it means that 99.999 percent of time link will work if you calculate in minutes or in time per year it means if I have system which is available five nines I am uh, allowing five minutes per year downtime. Uh, for four nines it's 53 minutes and three nines it's almost nine hours for microwave systems or wireless systems it's difficult to think about four nines if you are thinking about five nines availability uh, you have to also calculate parameters like what is the power supply availability and additional components which are used not only the microwave link and four nines it's approximately 53 minutes less than one hour unavailability per year what does mean uh, if I'm looking for rain because remember rain it's the most critical parameters for link availability uh, you see on this picture if I am speaking if I would like to reach four nines availability I have to look in my area what is the rain level per whole year and find level which is uh, maximum 99.99% it means four nines uh, I, I have to find level where rain it's not higher uh, than this uh, this time which I select as uh, my criteria, uh, the decision criteria and on this picture you see uh, first example that I have three times per year which is time one, time two, time three, 
and uh, during this time rain level was higher or was dense more than than uh, some value and this is value which I am looking for and you have example for sub 10 office which is in Devon uh, south of the UK it's 34.2 millimeters per hour this is the rain intensity and I know that if I select this rain level for my calculation uh, my the rain will not be stronger uh, for this uh, four nines time which I select as main main parameter uh, second picture present that uh, there is no way how to decide what time what months in the year this rain will be you can see the example one that I have three periods uh, with stronger rain than 32 millimeters but next year it can be even one one uh, short period and keep in mind that uh, this is uh, this figure the rain level it's calculated on some statistic data on some big database which is uh, managed by ITU and it can happen then one year it's even stronger or next year it's not so stronger it's again just average value which is coming from some statistical data the statistical data are going up to 40 years back this is uh, the rain level which is uh, important input parameters and again don't worry if you don't know this value system is able our link estimator is able to calculate it for you oxygen absorption this is uh, one key characteristic for V-band as you see on this picture uh, the yellow yellow bar is presenting that uh, for 60 gigahertz which is V-band the oxygen has so-called absorption peak uh, and uh, this absorption peak uh, if you look what is what is the level of for 64 gigahertz just atmosphere with oxygen it's adding 40 dB attenuation per each kilometer comparing to next millimeter wave band which is E band you see that this attenuation is just 0 0.35 dB uh, this is a really big peak and uh, what what is the advantage disadvantage I think it's obvious advantage is you can make a huge collocation because uh, atmosphere is doing good isolation between two links which are very close together and disadvantage of course uh, the links uh, are limited by distance uh, if you compare you have like uh, well, I don't know 20 times more attenuation comparing V-band and E-band some tables as I promise you uh, you see attenuation per one kilometer for different frequencies starting uh, with 5 gigahertz which is typical uh, Wi-Fi or uh, how to say hotspot hotspot band and you see that uh, the attenuation coming from rain it's almost nothing it's uh, for 40 millimeters uh, rain it's just 0 0.1 dB per kilometer and also atmosphere with oxygen humidity it's providing very low attenuation if you're going to higher frequencies you see 10 15 20 25 and if you are familiar with microwave system you know that you have to calculate what is your rain parameters uh, to be sure that link will work as you expect and now we have uh, this uh, two section which are related to millimeter wave band first one it's uh, frequency 57 and 62 for V band and you see rain attenuation if I need to compensate 40 millimeter rain I have to be able to compensate additional 14 dB it means if there is no rain there is zero and if it's uh, this 40 millimeters rain I have additional 14 dB attenuation and uh, the yellow yellow part which is last column and its name others it's related to atmosphere and humidity in atmosphere you see that it's 15.3 or 15.4 DB uh, total attenuation per kilometer uh, if I'm looking back uh, or to, to higher frequency again and going to E band which is 70 80 we have this uh, critical frequency like 70 75 80 85 and you see that others which is atmosphere it's not so critical because it's around 1 dB per kilometer but rain it's stronger and it's a direct relation uh, higher frequency mean higher attenuation during the rain and uh, looking to 62 gigahertz signal I named this table variable attenuation last uh, last line it's uh, last row it's just providing 
what is free space loss you have to calculate it uh, it's simply formula related to frequency and distance and this is loss which is always uh, uh, which has to be always compensated on the link and then you have 200 400 600 800 and uh, 100 uh, 1000 meters and attenuation if there is no rain small rain and high rain and you see how it's how it's going up for example if I have 40 millimeter link 40 millimeter rain and one kilometer link during this rain system has to be able to add or compensate additional 30 dB uh, it means signal is degrading by 30 dB but again don't worry there will be planning tool to providing you figures what is your link availability rain zones uh, it's a uh, last theoretical uh, picture uh, it's again coming from ITU. ITU is publishing a lot of recommendation and one it's uh, related to rain zones. Uh, rain zones are named by letters of, from alphabet starting from A and going uh, to, to another A, B, C, D and you see for example UK it's a little bit complicated country because you, you have uh, E, F, G, G and H uh, letter it means level of rain uh, used in the in, in in this region in our countries uh, I mean continental Europe it's a little bit better you can see it's a h k but our estimator uh, is uh, providing possibility to use your custom parameters as well uh, if you don't know what is the rain level you can simply put coordinates if you know your rain level you can simply overwrite uh, the calculated uh, or uh, rain zone and put your exact value which you know which is valid for your area and now overall characteristic uh, for this microwave uh, I mentioned that there is high oxygen absorption uh, we have very narrow beam on antennas it's uh, valid for v-band and e-band as well and the result is that we can reuse the frequency and we can uh, use very high dense deployment this is example from our company I like this picture because it's really presenting how how dense can be network and you see four units uh, four links running parallelly each link it's running 320 megabits full duplex capacity and these links are not affecting each other these links are totally interference free and you see that just 20 centimeters maybe 30 centimeters between center of antennas it's enough for physical separation we are of course using different channel different polarization but basic idea is this one that uh, we are able to put a lot of units a lot of links uh, in one area and uh, it's because narrow antenna beam oxygen it's helping us because it's doing uh, absorption and of course uh, the, we have plenty of frequencies because the band it's really high uh, now I am I am going to concentrate on our products. Uh, we are named this product Liberator, and uh, behind this name it's a V and some number. It's easy identification. V it's for V band. It's running in 60 gigahertz frequencies, and uh, the digit behind the V are specifying what is the throughput. We have system which is called V100. It's new one. It's coming this uh, this days uh, on the market. Uh, and you see it's 100 it means it's 100 full duplex throughput it means you have 100 from terminal A to one to terminal B and another 100 from terminal B to terminal A it's because we are these systems are running as frequency division duplex and you have two channels and each channel it's uh, on speed 100 megabits the next system is V320 it's again running in 60 gigahertz and throughput it's 320 160 or it can be again 100 uh, why we have different throughput is that we are supporting more modulation and based on selected modulation the throughput is 320 or 160 or 100 and last one which is the the, the most uh, powerful or more more from capacity point of view the highest one it's V1000 and as you expect 1000 means that it's a uh, 1 gigabit full duplex throughput all systems are looking uh, same we are using same shelf same antenna and you see a different picture but uh, it's really one hardware or uh, one shelf antennas 
and modems inside and everything is uh, looking similar difference is really about the throughput and of course because we are using different modulations uh, also the maximum distance which you can uh, achieve with this system uh, regarding the concept or something like model scenario uh, you see on this slide our system it's uh, working as a wireless link it's a point-to-point -point application and we can we are using that it's like fiber speed uh, over wireless and it's really because if you look for the fiber systems now uh, typical application it's going up to one gigabits uh, we know that there are system running on 10 gigabits but if you look for the number of ports uh, and uh, ratio between price and power you see that gigabit it's more the, the most popular capacity or connection and this is why we are using this that fiber speed over wireless link because we are providing same capacity which is normal on fiber but on wireless link uh, how it's how it's working uh, it's as you see on the picture we have one outdoor unit which is very compact 18 by 18 centimeters and uh, data and power are going over one Ethernet cable and powering it's uh, going through the PoE for this system we need a little bit higher power and we have to use PoE plus which is which is providing a little bit higher power but in case that you have uh, infrastructure with data switches and these switches are capable to provide PoE plus powering you can power the unit directly from the switch specification I will I will not go deeply about uh, and reading all features uh, you will have you will be able to download this presentation uh, what is what is typical or the, 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 the most important parameters are the IP66 you can deploy it without any limitation in, in our regions uh, we are supporting QoS interface it's uh, modular or auto negotiate out uh, it's running auto negotiation that you can use it as uh, fast Ethernet Ethernet or gigabit Ethernet uh, and you see critical parameter like maximum TX power uh, sensitivity and uh, also MTBA which is uh, more than 25 years and uh, survivability it's 200 kilometers per hour I mean wind survivability and operational it's up to 160 and uh, the temperature range it's from minus 45 to plus 55 which is uh, for all European countries enough uh, V100 it's a new product uh, it's coming these days uh, on the market and uh, what is the difference if you look for previews and this one is that we are more and more features you can see this system will support so-called sync E or 1588 synchronization which is critical when this system will be used for mobile operator or some networks when you need to transport synchronization over data connection we will extend QoS uh, currently we are supporting up to four queues this new system we will go up to eight queues uh, and uh, we are also adding as optional IS encryption VC20 it's a today product again similar characteristic size it's same it's 18 by 18 centimeters uh, and V1000 its last one the Dif main difference is just about the capacity and the distance you see you can go up to 800 meters in no, no, no rain environment in Europe it's uh, typically around 400 500 meters if you order link uh, doesn't matter whether it's V100 V320 V1000 uh, you will receive uh, you will receive all pieces which are on this picture you will receive two terminals one terminal is terminal A second it's terminal B remember it's frequency division duplex system and we have to have two different terminals you will receive two alignment brackets these alignment brackets are very nice because you see just one screw and you are able to align uh, in whole range I will I will provide you later more info there is the picture to see how it's running but you see there is this uh, uh, the big like oh, almost 180 degrees uh, movement and with one screw which is using special nails you are able to to move uh, over whole uh, angle and it's very easy you have just one screw for lock and one screw for alignment the system are also coming to ice shields which are putting on the system after installation uh, you have uh, 
two Ethernet seals, which are providing uh, termination or connection between cable which is coming from ODU and your cable going to the infrastructure. Uh, our ODU unit, as you can see on the terminal picture, it's coming with uh, short cable. This cable is around one meter uh, length. And the reason why we are putting this cable is to be sure that connection of the cable going to the ODU, it's really waterproof. This cable, it's testing in, testing in factory in our, during our production and it's really waterproof and uh, keep in mind do not remove this cable do not change the connector on uh, at the end of the cable uh, it's uh, usually if you change it and doing some modification it's high probability that water will go down to the unit uh, go to unit and it will definitely destroy some components inside and uh, this is why we have this seal kit included because you can easily connect the cable going from the ODU to one part of the seal kit and the second part it's used for your cable it's easy for if you need to disconnect it's very easy you are just disconnecting one cable with system you will receive also two power injector including the power cord on the picture it's a UK version but if you are ordering for Europe uh, you will receive the euro version euro plug and last components in system are the mass bracket which are ready to install which, which are providing installation on the mast. If you need to install a unit on the wall, you can directly connect the alignment bracket. If you need to install it on the mast, you are connecting the piece, uh, this U, U metal uh, on the alignment bracket, and then you have four rings how to fix this uh, alignments and complete brackets on the mast. This is uh, what is coming in one box if you order any of V band link. As accessories we have uh, three type of accessories or which, which are really optional. First one is optical alignment tool. Uh, it's for easy alignment you will put it on the on the link or on the unit and it's uh, optic scope that you can see opposite side. Our suggestion is if you are doing massive installation uh, definitely order two or three pieces of this alignment tool and uh, use this tool during the installation. This tool, uh, there is no requirements to have it during the normal operation, but for alignment it's very useful because your techniques can very easily find whether they are shooting directly to the opposite side. And remember, antenna beam is very narrow and uh, sometimes it's not so easy to find where is the opposite side, what has to be down tail and this optical fi uh, fiber scope uh, increase the, or decrease the time needed for installation. The additional accessories it's outdoor Ethernet cable but you can use uh, any CAT 5E cable but again it has to be outdoor type of cable be careful about the connectors which you use to be sure that everything is proper and everything is, as, as a producer of the cable it's recommending. Last part is lightning protectors uh, if you need, uh, if you dis deploy the link to area where is high probability for some lightning, uh, our suggestion is to deploy this lightning protector. And if you would like to have full protection, you have to install one lightning protection close to the ODU. And second uh, lightning protector, it's installed on cable where are you going to the building. It's important if you are uh, installing a lightning protector also to provide uh, the proper grounding. Uh, the protector has to be connected to the central ground and we have we have uh, some recommendation and some rules how to make the proper grounding in our installation documentation. If you look for the installation time uh, uh, you see some time uh, the unit is very light and uh, the brackets are very easy for installation and if you have if you have cable ready because the cable if you are going through the building which is I don't know 10, 10 floors high it's not so easy to make the cable connection but if you have cable ready uh, you see that uh, ODU you need maximum 30 minutes to install it because it's very easy you have, you just to fix it on the mast or make uh, four screws and fix the, the brackets uh, on the screws and then if you have just one engineer, we can expect something like two to three hours for alignment because he is moving from one side to another side. 
if we have two engineers on each side, one engineer, uh, we can we can expect that the alignment will be finished maximum one hour. If your uh, installation stuff it's uh, has experience. With, with the microwave system, I believe that they will be even faster than one hour. Plus, if they are using the optical scope, it will be really uh, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, and link it's up and aligned. Installation, I mentioned CAT5 uh, E cable as minimum. If you are using CAT7, it's even better. Remember, it has to be outdoor, because you are definitely part of the way going outdoor. Uh, be careful about screen. Uh, that shielding has to be a really good one. Uh, sometimes you can find uh, the system which are using the plastic foil with some uh, aluminium on, on this foil, and this is usually not so proper. The better it's using uh, solid and really shielded cable. And also be aware about connectors. If you are using uh, shielding or screening, you have to use also connector which is ready to connect, uh, to make connection for this screen or shield uh, protection. PoE, you see the picture, uh, it's uh, as I mentioned, uh, PoE Plus, it's uh, according standard AO2.38T, uh, and terminal requires uh, approximately 18 watts. This is why we need PoE Plus, because PoE is going up to 15 watts, we need a little bit more. On uh, PoE, it's easy identification what are the ports. Uh, you see that one it's called power LAN and out. It's a connector where it's power going to the ODU. And LAN in it's uh, when you connect your internal infrastructure. You have also one LED to indicate that everything is OK. Uh, you see if it's green, everything is OK. It's, if it's amber, it's just power, but there is no connection. It means ODU it's not connected. And if it's blinking, there is some error. And mounting, I mentioned this mounting bracket, it's a really, how to say, super cool. Uh, we, in the past, we use the mounting brackets with three different uh, screws. You have one screw for lock, uh, another screw for coarse alignment, and last screw for fine alignment. We change it uh, to this one, and it's, uh, it's uh, you just uh, see there is one, one uh, screw which is using for lock to be sure that there is no movement. And then you have another screw which is uh, using for alignment. And you just need to open two locks and then you have two screws to making alignment and it's going in whole range. You have nothing like coarse and fine. Everything is on, on this one. And uh, when you will be, uh, when you receive your first link and you will see it, you will confirm definitely that it's really useful and uh, design, it's really smart. You have uh, both uh, option for installation. You see on the uh, picture, which is in the middle, the wall installation that you will simply put uh, the alignment bracket and fix it over s four screws on the wall. And for uh, mast mounting, it's a picture on the right upper corner that you have this uh, metal, which is like U, U shape. You connect it to the alignment bracket with four screws, which are coming with the system as well. And then you have two uh, metal rings which are fixing it on the mast. It's very uh, easy for installation, and if you need to change unit, it's also very easy. You have just four screws, and you can change the unit. Lightening protector, uh, you see here, it's uh, we are using uh, uh, professional. It's expensive, but it's really professional and uh, stable type of uh, protection and you see diameters. In this case, that you have lightening protection, you don't need to install the seal, Ethernet seal uh, units, because the sealing or connection between ODU and your cable is done in uh, lightening protection. And this is a typical installation. You see ODU, cable from ODU, which is around one meter, it's going uh, to the lightening protection kit, and then from lightening protection cable, it's going to your I don't know, server room or to your router, to your switch. If you need higher or sometimes uh, the owner of the building require uh, the protection also on input of cable to the building, uh, this is the s uh, second picture, second schemes, that you have LPU installed close to hall, which is used for cable entrance to the building. 
uh, and uh, be careful you have to ground it this LPU to the to the building ground to be sure that protection is really working and then you have PoE but the PoE it's already in indoor in indoor environment and then cable going to the data it's really protected uh, if I if you are designing link remember I mentioned the rain of course a line of sight all these systems in this high frequency this millimeter wave uh, and also traditional microwave system going from uh, 5 to 38 gigahertz they are very sensitive to to pass profile and you have to uh, be sure that your link is uh, running in line of sight environment line of sight means that there is no obstacles in frontal zone and be careful because uh, if you are installing link and this is our practical experience if you installing the link in area where is for example some construction like here you see the crane in middle uh, be careful that uh, this crane it's moving they have these uh, lines which are used for for some transportation and if these lines are going through your uh, frontal zone it can affect the signal you can see suddenly some drop or higher level of errors and it can be because such type of equipment people are normally not thinking that it can affect the link but be careful in this high frequency any obstacle can affect uh, significantly the, the, the link quality uh, again key parameters uh, it's useful to have this table if somebody is asking you see the transmit power it's around 7 dB on radio uh, we are our small antenna it's using 38 dB gain and sensitivity it's from minus 60 to minus 75 based on the system based on the modulation if you are we are also recommending to put some safety margin uh, for higher modulation 6 dB for lower modulation 3 dB and then you have total total uh, pass uh, parameter in this case for the system with lower modulation which is providing 160 megabits we are able to compensate 157 dB remember the table which I use a couple of slides before if you look there is attenuation by atmosphere and there is some rain and if you are looking for the highest distance you have to be sure that both these parameters rain plus uh, atmosphere attenuation if you zoom together they cannot go over 157 dB and now it's link available uh, availability or link estimator it's just a screenshot but I will switch to Excel sheet I hope you see now uh, the Excel uh, this link available calculator it's uh, available on our web page I didn't mention it before but we have uh, we have uh, web page which is uh, www.subtensystem.com uh, I can www.subtensystems.com uh, and uh, there is section product and download and if you go to the product and downloads you, you are able to download all documentation data sheets and also in additional information you can see that there is link availability calculator you can also download maps uh, for our equipment and this uh, DOC files and so on uh, going back to the calculator uh, this is uh, first uh, or the most important screen uh, you need to put uh, some parameters these parameters are uh, or editable parameters on this page are with light blue color and uh, what I need first I will put for example Opole because I select coordinates for Opole city uh, these are here and then I can I can select the link uh, link length what will be my distance between two points uh, you see now I select 800 meters 
and system is automatically if I change for example parameters for longitude you see uh, how system change the ITU rain now it's 40 millimeters if I go back uh, to to Opole you see now it's 43.7 millimeters per hours if you are not so okay you can you can select that uh, you will not use uh, the ITU but uh, you will use uh, you will use your own you can select this manual entry and in this case system will not And now system will not use the ITU parameters, but uh, system will use parameters which I put to my manual manual window. I will return back to ITU. And you see immediately, I'm sorry system is pausing uh, for some reason, okay. Uh, you see immediately what is availability for VC20, V1, V100 and V1000. The availability is calculated uh, in this percentage. And as I, if you remember, I mentioned that it's good to run uh, up, uh, application, the, the, to use wireless application with uh, four nines availability. Uh, if I increase the distance to one kilo or 900 meters, You see now I have uh, 900 meters and uh, V320 with capacity V100, uh, 160 megabits or uh, V1000 with extended range. You see it's still able to run uh, with uh, four nines availability. If I put, for example, 1800, you see immediately that V-band will not be available and it's okay because we are saying that our system is able to work uh, maximum 16, uh, 1600 meters. I will go back to the, for example, 950. And you see, okay, uh, the system with capacity 160 mega will still work uh, with four nines. This is uh, this, uh, how to say, input input page. And you see what is your your link availability. Uh, now you have additional sheets which are very useful. First one it's called link alignment. And this one it's providing you calculation what is what is your what is your expected receiving level. This is important if you are doing alignment that you have to know what level has to be reached to be sure that you are properly aligned. And to help you during the alignment uh, on the unit, we have also BNC output, which is providing a DC voltage. You can use voltmeter connect to this port, and uh, system will provide you some value from 0 0.6 to 3 volts. And based on this level, you are able to see what is the distance or what what is your receiving level of the signal. We are providing this tab. There is no relation between voltage and the receiving level of the signal, but we are saying if you are on distance, for example, 800 meters and going up, you have to receive voltage around 1.9 volt. If you receive such level, it's okay. Then you have to go to uh, to a web page of the device and check that the real receiving level signal is on level which you expect. This is uh, helpful for installation. If you are doing some uh, offer to your customer and you know all this information like where link will be installed, what is distance, uh, you can pro you can go to sheet, in our case it will be BPSK V320 and you have here calculation providing all details about availability and distances and so on. You see it's what frequency, this is middle frequency, what is the coordinates, 
uh, you see the link length it's uh, 950 meters and then you have calculation and at the end you see what is the cal availability it's 495 which is uh, also very 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 good plus you see here okay we expect that receiving signal level has to be uh, has to be minus 60 minus 61 and uh, if you connect the uh, voltage uh, DC voltmeter you see that it has to be on voltmeter you have to see something like 1.7 plus minus 0 0.2 volts and you can simply copy it and use uh, use uh, as part of your uh, offer uh, if customer is asking for such calculation or link calculation now I will return back uh, to presentation Okay, we finish uh, on this link estimator. Remember, you can download it. It's free tool, uh, and it's very easy. You just need to put coordinates, uh, what is the link link, and system will calculate what will be link availability. Okay, installation. I mentioned line of sight. It has to be really line of sight, and uh, be careful. Line of sight in wireless environment, in microwave, doesn't mean that you have just... Uh, uh, you have just uh, visibility to the opposite side. You have to have some space around uh, also free and there is just table to see what is this Fresnel zone. For example, if you have a link uh, for 600 meters, in the middle you have to have space which is like 1.7 meters. Be careful, uh, it's not so easy to measure what is, what is uh, this size and especially if your link is going close to the trees and there are some branches or close to the building, it's almost impossible to calculate uh, whether this building is going to Frenzo or not. You have to be really careful during the installation and the best is to make some photos and discuss with customer, okay, now link is working, but in case that there will be, for example, rain and that there will be water on the roof which is close to our link, it can uh, produce some reflection and it can degrade signal quality. Just be careful that the uh, Fresnel zone has to be really clear and application has to be pure line of sight. Uh, next one, uh, what, what is, uh, remember uh, I mentioned these uh, lines uh, from crane or uh, electricity lines. Just be careful, this is a picture from uh, optical scope. Uh, if you are using this optical scope, you see this cross and you can uh, easily point it uh, to opposite side. And uh, if pe people are usually thinking, okay, first one is good uh, or bad because it's far, I don't see the link. And second, it's good because I see link, it's not so far. But it's uh, not true yet yeah. because this uh, electricity lines, you see this line for power distribution, they can affect your signal. Remember, it's for people, it's looking like, okay, there is nothing, it's just piece of metal. But for signal propagation, it's really important that this can make some interferences or some signal degradation. Okay, uh, during the installation, just be careful uh, about the polarization. We are using uh, antenna orientation, which is called slant or dual slant. Uh, that in, its antenna is uh, installed not like square, but uh, with, with one corner up. But in this case, you have still two possible polarization or orientation and on the link you see there is uh, on some older system you can see arrow which is uh, directly on the back uh, back shelf and on newer systems uh, because we are doing some modification uh, there is label saying these arrows and uh, during the installation uh, the arrows uh, arrows have to be in same orientation yeah you can you can have uh, both up or one up and second down it's one polarization and second polarization that uh, both are left or both are right or one left or and one right you cannot make so that one arrow will be up and the second will be to the left in this case you will not be able to set up the link uh, just be careful that uh, this this uh, polarization it's important for proper operation 
and this is why we are using the slant. Uh, it's uh, on this picture you see if it's uh, if it's uh, no slant orientation, it's the blue one, blue curve. If it's slant, it's this red one. And uh, the advantage is that uh, the red one has much bigger isolation between the main and side lobe. Yeah, you see the main lobe. It's in middle of the graph, and uh, the blue has a very strong lobe immediately next. But with red, if you are using this dual slant, uh, you see much far uh, the the second lobe and with much lower energy. Uh, back to our scenario when we have four parallel links, uh, it's done because we have remember it's FDD system. We have two frequency, one on terminal A, another on terminal B. And we have two polarization. And on this scenario, we are mixing everything. You see one link, it's using on my side A vertical. Second link, it's A horizontal. Next link, it's B vertical. And next one, it's B horizontal. And in this case, these four links are working without any interferences between. Uh, installation, uh, the alignment, I mentioned it's very easy now. We have very perf very smart uh, the alignment brackets, and regarding the installation, uh, you can use uh, wall installation, or you can also use uh, the mast or pole installation. Uh, this uh, these components are going with the system. You don't need to take care and ordering some special. If you order link, you have uh, alignment bracket which is on the left coming with, with, uh, in, inside the box and also this mass bracket which is in plastic bag on the right. Uh, all these pieces or parts are going with link as default. Uh, some suggestion about, uh, regards alignment. I always uh, prefer to verify that you are on the best uh, level of the signal uh, and use voltmeter. But if you are on short links like up to 100 meters, uh, it's enough to use the scope. Just uh, make be sure that your scope it's shooted to opposite side. We have this uh, cross inside, and if you see uh, in this cross uh, your link, it's okay. If link it's uh, a little bit longer, up to 200 meters, uh, use scope and then align maximum voltage. And uh, for longer link, it means above 200 meters. Make uh, use scope, uh, align uh, the link using the voltmeter to find the best one, and also verify that uh, the receiving level is what you expect. Remember, in link estimator, you you are able to uh, see what is expected level of the signal, expected receiving level, and be sure that you are receiving this level of the signal. Uh, if you are doing the, uh, there is again uh, the alignment pr procedure. This is typical scenario. On the left, you have picture that you have uh, optical scope to make first uh, or something like course alignment, and then voltmeter to measure uh, the receiving level of the signal. And uh, this uh, for alignment, you just need to have this Allen key or Imbus key, and you just you just need one tool, and you are make. We are able to make full alignment and also to make uh, the final fixing. Now uh, we are going to web interface uh, of the system. Uh, if you are based on the based on the system, if you are uh, using V320 default addresses as as you see in uh, URL, it's 192.168.0.21 uh, and 0.22. If it's V1000, it's 192.168.1.21 and 1.22. And uh, now you see the basic or status uh, of an interface. On an interface, you can you can define uh, the what will be output level. Uh, you can select different something like four three level of the power. And uh, also you can select what will be modulation. Remember, VC20 has two modulation. BPSK, QPSK, and we are also supporting different uh, forward error correction. And based on this, you have different throughput and also different sensitivity of the link. And last section in error interface for alignment, it's alignment mode. In this case, system is providing the DC voltage as graph on your web page. 
if if you finish alignment, go to this page and uh, return back to the normal operation mode. It will minimize some uh, power resources of of a processor. Uh, again, I uh, I mentioned that we have uh, this DC output and graph when you see uh, distance and expected level of the voltage if you have proper aligned the link if your link is proper aligned and connection to to this this DC voltage it's uh, on the back of the unit it's a BNC or it's coax type of connector. And this link, it's one uh, cable, this uh, cable for connection between connectors and voltmeter included uh, in accessories. Uh, just again, remember how accurate you have to be during the alignment. Uh, I mentioned that antenna narrow or antenna beam is very narrow. And if you look, for example, for link which is 400 meters far, you have to be in a ring which is uh, 3.5 meter in diameter. And it's again, if you are if you have experienced this, for example, 5 gigahertz system, and now you are immediately going to install the 60 gigahertz system, be careful. In 5 gigahertz, the antennas are much wider, and you don't need to you don't need to be so precise during the alignment. But uh, in V band and E band, uh, when antennas are much narrow, uh, you have to be very careful that you are really on main uh, main lobe. And typically, difference uh, you can remember that the difference between main and side lobe it's at least 13 dB. For V-band it's even 15 dB, for E-band it's 13 dB. But if you remember, okay, if I am receiving signal, uh, which is, I calculated that I have to receive some level of the signal, for example, minus 50, and I am receiving something like minus 60, there is almost 100% uh, probability that you are out of the main lobe. And in this case, you have to realign to be sure that you are receiving as much as possible. Uh, web interface, uh, you see we have uh, six main pages. The first one is overview and you have description what is on this overview. Uh, if link is up, uh, as you see on this picture, the nice functionality is that you see information from both and you see information from local terminal and also remote terminal. Uh, and you see how in, in this status or overview it's uh, info which you expect. There is serial number type of uh, firmware, uh, how long link it's up, what is the temperature inside the unit, uh, what is the connection on the data uh, network, uh, data or data rate network means what is the speed on wired connection on cable which is going from ODU. In our case you see that the local terminal is connected with uh, 1000 megabit, it's connected as gigabit and opposite side it's not applicable in this case unit it's not connected to the data network you have no connection on the on the cable we are just receiving the power you see IP address and you see also MAC addresses if you click uh, on the network interface um, uh, you see now configuration for network interface and this is what you expect there is setting for IP address uh, physical parameters of the port uh, by default system is in auto negotiation but if you need you can select that it will work as fast Ethernet only, half Ethernet uh, or Ethernet or fast Ethernet, uh, full duplex, half duplex and all these characteristics. Uh, the next section it's related to quality of service. You can enable or disable QoS and you can also use uh, what technique will be used for QoS. QoS can be either based on the VLAN priority bits or it can also use this content base. In this case system is checking the type of service on uh, next level. It's called diff service or type of service. Uh, it's it's coming from IP. And then you have four queues and you can specify how queues will be served, whether it will be weightening or strict and then this one. Uh, the next option is uh, support uh, for large frame. You can optimize your link. If your link is not uh, running uh, jumbo frames, you cannot simply activate jumbo frames. You can specify OK. Uh, my frame will be up to 1522 bytes, which is a uh, frame with one tag. If you are using multiple tags, like QNQ or some MPLS frames, uh, you can specify up to uh, frame size up to 2048 bytes. In this case, you have plenty of tags possible. And if you are use, really using jumbo frames, you can specify jumbo, which is 10240 bytes. Uh, why to specify exactly why it's not good to simply put jumbo everywhere? Uh, it's logical if you are if system has to be ready to support uh, large frames 
the latency it's a little bit higher uh, if you compare with latency for for small frames and it's logical because if you if you have to be ready for large frame you have to have some more buffers and you have to wait a little bit more than for shorter frames the next page is our interface we speak uh, we spoke about it uh, before a little bit but again there is uh, two key parameters you can set uh, the TX power level and modulation type and uh, with modulation you also have different setting for or with modulation you can also select light or heavy forward direction code and uh, below this selection below modulation tape you have data rate on air interface and this is what will be really real user throughput in this case I am uh, I am operating on data rate 144 megabits uh, because I am using using some heavy uh, uh, heavy heavy forward error correction. Uh, the next page it's system. In system, it's setting uh, for time that you can specify either manual time or you can also use the NTP services if you are running it. There is time zone specification. Uh, you have possibility to change uh, password for your login. You see that uh, default it's admin and password. And it's highly recommended when you install the link to change it to your own because you know this is uh, default and everybody knows this default. It's enough to just download the, the manual and everybody will find that admin password is login name and password. And then you can activate SNMP whether it will be V1, V2 or V3 and specify also some parameters for SNMP trap. Our right side it's for say system maintenance. Uh, you can uh, upgrade firmware on this page. And you can also download your configuration uh, if you need to store it. And you can also uh, use the reset to factory. It means that you will, uh, if if you have uh, some unit which is unknown to you, you can simply uh, reset it to default and start from the from the scratch. Last page is uh, oh SNMP. There is a description about SNMP that we are supporting V1, V2, or V3. With V3, you have to also specify some username and password. And to remember, V3, it's read-write. Uh, V1 or V2, it's read-only. Statistic page. On this statistic, you have overview what, what uh, volume of data it's uh, going through the link. And uh, we, have, we have statistic, again, network interface. It's a wired interface. It's Ethernet cable going from the unit or to unit. An air interface, it's connection between uh, radios over, over wireless. And you see key characteristics like uh, total frames uh, or packets in, the, in this terminology, uh, how many packets uh, was uh, errored, and then you have uh, indication uh, what was, uh, because you know, packet can be from 64 to 10,000, you have no information what is the volume data. Next item is uh, octets, which is bytes how many bytes we transmit and uh, you see also what frames uh, or what packets uh, were sent as unicast, unicast, multicast, broadcast whether there were some frames for pa uh, pausing the transmission and then uh, rest it uh, that there was some error it was either too short or too large or there, there was some uh, physical error during the transmission or CRC if system was checking what is the whether the, this a redundancy check it's correct uh, he found that something is wrong in this case it's reporting as CRC errors and in service page uh, uh, you see information which can be useful for some troubleshooting because you see all events uh, which are happening uh, during the link operation uh, regarding the test uh, it's good uh, if somebody is asking uh, what is the real capacity this is example for V320 and you see real screenshot it's layer 1 test uh, because we are saying that we V320 with the low uh, or light forward error connection it's able to transmit 300, uh, 320 megabits and uh, this is what you can see if you really use some layer 1 keep in mind it has to be layer 1 measurement and this is what we are doing uh, during our test uh, and, and uh, some commissioning you see here there is sunset. This sunset it's used optical connection or converter from metallic to optical because uh, layer one loop you can do it uh, just on optical fiber. 
and you see on the screen that the transmit rate it's uh, 320 megabits it means 320 megabit zeros and one or 320 million zeros and ones are sending over line and same number it's receive over the interface and if you look to the control LED controls you see there is no errors it means it's real transmission and uh, uh, if you compare with, uh, if you are looking to our competitors, they are usually not doing such a layer one test. They are always uh, saying uh, something. It's layer two, layer three, uh, and you have to calculate some overhead. But on our system, if it's 320, you see 320 megabits. It's going through the link. Uh, I, may, I I show you before our uh, website. It's uh, www.sub10systems.com. We are also on this uh, social media like Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And uh, last, what is new one? Uh, we have uh, another. Another page which is support. Sub10systems.com. And this is our support uh, web page. Uh, it's with just mainly with some technical information. But what is good, uh, for example, in training and events, you see what are scheduled webinars. You can register to these webinars. And if it, there is some previous webinar, you can download uh, uh, currently presentation which was used during the pre uh, seminar. But you can also uh, later on will be able to download uh, the recorded webinar. It means there will be presentation including the speech. Uh, my suggestion is just check time to time this uh, this page because you will be able to to see what are coming webinars. You can you can download uh, the, the past webinars and of, of course there is also for example this option request training session. If you will need uh, to some special training you can contact us through the email or through this form. Okay it's uh, all from my side for today. I will check if there are some questions. Now you have you have option uh, that you can go to the to your uh, application and uh, you have question window and you can ask question. Uh, I will wait some time. If there are some question, just please put it uh, as text uh, to your question window and I will I will answer it. Okay, no question. If there are no no question, uh, I would like thanks again for your time. Uh, in one or two days, you will receive emails uh, where there will be the link for a webinar and also for recorded webinar or a recorded session. And I hope uh, we will soon or we will be uh, connected uh, soon on some next webinars. Thank you again for your time and have a nice day.